guys been a while good to see you you're gonna love today's session because today we're reading Chimaman Dangozi Adichie's latest work of fiction Zikora a short story this short story is available on Amazon Prime um, Amazon Kindle so you can read uh, a Kindle version of the book of the story it's just a short story that you can finish in just a few minutes and it's on put down label you can't put it down it's wonderful extremely wonderful um, seven years after Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie dropped Americana, she finally decides to gift us this wonderful story, which grabs at the core of the complexity of human relationships. Human relationships are hard. And this book, I keep calling it the book, the short story. <laughs> this short story is wonderful. Now join me as we look at Zikora, a short story. So in Zikora, the eponymous character uh, is a recently dumped new mother struggling to come to terms with the fact that the father of her child dumped her when he realized that she's pregnant. Um, the thing about this story is she hadn't expected this to happen because to her, this was a perfect man. He was absolutely perfect in every sense of the word. He is a successful lawyer like herself and he he gets her you know the kind of person that you you can actually talk to about anything and they they were so in sync with one another that it becomes really difficult you know to understand the fact that all this love just flies out of the window the moment that this man realizes that she's going to have a baby without telling him you know the bone of contention is you decided on your own to have a baby without asking me for my own impute without asking me if i want to have a baby weird right okay so um in this short story which i've said you can finish in just a few minutes uh adichie manages to present an array of unforgettable characters there is Ikora herself of course she is well educated successful um one minute She's in this very lovely relationship with this fellow lawyer because she's a DC lawyer, very successful, very smart. She's up for partner in her firm. And the next minute, we see her um, desperately trying to get this man, Kwame, to come back to her and to be happy about the fact that they're having this baby and to be a part of the life of this baby, at least, even if he doesn't want anything to do with her anymore. But uh, that doesn't happen. Now, um, Kwame is, is also a very wonderful person from what we see, you know, in the beginning, when she's thinking about him and how they met and how their relationship has progressed, we see that he's an absolutely wonderful person. He's like, you know, a sort of black man that any black woman will be happy to be lucky to be with. But unfortunately, that's not the case the moment she gets pregnant. Now, Zikora is almost 40 years old. And according to even her mother, she is lucky to have gotten pregnant. And because of that, there's no question of the fact that she's going to keep this child. She's going to keep this pregnancy and have this baby. Well, uh, at the beginning of the story, she is in the throes of labor, experiencing unspeakable pain, um, while her gracefully aloof mother sits there all through the night without touching her, without you know, as much as showing any, uh, any emotion, no hair, no strand of hair out of place. And she's just sitting down there, uh, expecting her to, well, I don't know, take this. That's what women do. They take this pain and they have these babies. So, um, she expects her to understand that childbirth should be born with a sort of universal female grace. Um, the mother, despite her regal aloofness and, you know, stoicism, um, we also get to meet her because that's what Adichie does in this story. She, for a very short story, we become so intimate with all these different characters, with different stories, you know, things going on around them. And we get so, we get so close to them. We get so, we love meeting them. Now, um, the mother herself despite you know her grace and everything is 
in a tangled mess of the systemic breaking of the female spirit, that's what I call it, the systemic breaking of the, the female spirit in African cultures that place more value on male children. Having suffered three miscarriages and undergoing a hysterectomy, it becomes very clear that because she's the wife of a very successful man, her husband is pressured into taking another wife who will bear him heirs because, you know, Africa, Nigeria. And um, so this woman is subdued into, whether she likes it or not, being okay with the life of being called the senior wife. And not just that, she has to make good to this other woman and try to not look like she's a bad person for not, you know, being so happy every time that this one pops out a male child. So she has to be happy, even if she's not, be happy for her, be happy for her husband and, you know, be in her own place and all whatnot. Now, uh, okay, so uh, she's subdued in her role. And her daughter's moments of closeness with the younger wife drives a wedge between them that only the birth of Zikora's son begins to shift when she stays with Zikora, um, nursing a broken heart, you know, and all the other pains that new motherhood exacerbates. New motherhood, oh my God. Then there is Miliako. Miliako water, you know, that's what um, Zikora calls her. Zikora's closest cousin, who is her confidant, and... She herself is trapped in a loveless marriage with a man who rapes her. She's a good friend, non-judgmental, her cousin's rock, but she's still married to a man who does not deserve her. She lives in this stifled existence, practically raising five children by herself, although she's married. So she tells Zikora, why bother? I have a husband, but I'm basically raising these children by myself, so you can do this. It seems... Like this mountain is insurmountable, but I promise you, you can do this. Well, um, throughout the story, there is a struggle for Zikora and the reader to understand Kwame's actions. It comes down to Kwame. Adichie delves into the often neglected issue of how men are raised and how well they understand women and reproduction. It seems as if that everything that has to do with reproduction is a woman's problem. For example, even if the man really wants a child, he, in, in basically all cultures, you know, he just wants to be told, oh, I'm pregnant and that's it. Oh, I'm happy or I'm not happy or whatever. It doesn't matter. If a woman doesn't want to be pregnant, well, she has to think about that on her own. If she wants to be pregnant, she has to think about that on her own. So basically, she tries to show that how boys are raised is a little bit problematic because we're not taking them seriously enough to make them understand that this is how it works. This is how a woman's body works. This is what happens because at the end of the day, Miliako makes... Zikora understand that maybe Kwame is right when he says, you didn't talk to me about this. You didn't tell me about this. So she's like, but what, what did he think I was saying when I said, I'm off the pill. The pill makes me fat. I'm no longer taking the pill. What did he think I was talking about? Because at the end of the day, he still thinks that she's magically doing something to not get pregnant. And um, according to him, there's a miscommunication because they didn't agree to have a baby. You know, she doesn't know if he wants a kid. She only assumed because, you know, uh, there's this occasion where a relative of hers comes to Delaware to have a baby and she sees how wonderful Kwame is with, you know, the the other baby of this woman who's come to deliver a new baby. And so she thinks to herself, oh, he's going to be such a good father. But, you know, that doesn't mean he wants a child. So that conversation was never had. And somehow it was supposed to be on the woman. Well, um... Well, um, the story is dense with human emotions, raises so many questions about right and wrong and the choices that others may find strange, especially clashing cultures, how um, Zikora begins to tell other people, my father's other wife, instead of saying my father's second wife, to which Americans ultimately assume it means the wife that he married after he left her mother, because he never left the mother. The mother is there. Uh, this woman despite being the owner of two private schools very educated she is still subdued into staying in this marriage and just accepting whatever just because you know she's not able to have a male child those those are some of the uh, things to think about now ultimately motherhood and its tendency to heighten every emotion is explored especially within zikora's unique situation 
She's shamelessly and desperately clinging to the hope that Kwame will come to his senses and embrace her and her child. And rejection after rejection, even when he blocks her number, she still clings on to this hope, continuing to hope that because he was too perfect to turn into this stranger, uh, somehow something is going to change. But until the very end of the story, nothing changes, nothing at all. He is this perfectly selfish stranger. And well, in the end, we'll learn a lot about family, cultural differences, the age old question of how well one can really say that they know another person. Because according to what Zikora knows, this man is supposed to be perfect. But look what happened. Um, so the story is simply unputdownable. Like I said, it's available on Amazon uh, and Kindle. So please grab it and read it and let me know what you think. It's absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Lots of beautiful characters. Lots of um, emotions and um, Aditya's signature style of, of giving us a story that we can't get enough of. So um, thank you so much for listening, guys. Try to read this story and um, let me know. As usual, if you want to read a written review, go to www.strokesonpaper.com and read a written review. Please like, subscribe, and um, just keep letting me know what you'd like to see. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.